Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. This is a chainsaw impact wrench. Well, I'd say that like you can pick one up at Home Depot. It's a chainsaw fabric cobbled to a large one inch drive impact wrench. Thanks in large part to Logan, part of our sort of skunk works team here at TTC. And this is the chainsaw you guys wanted to see more than any other slapped onto this thing. And by the numbers should be a more powerful combination than the ubiquitous LS swap it comments we of course also got, even if that LS were to come right out of Leroy. So here's why and how we got here. This is a 3,500 some odd dollar gas railway impact wrench made by Racine. It's used for railroad construction and deconstruction, but we bought it in a very midlife crisis sort of move. It just looked freaking awesome. I want one and I want to be a guy who owns one. And while it wasn't as potent as we might have dreamt about when stroking the brochure, it's made to work all day, not quarter mile drag runs. The 46.5cc Tanaka engine sips gas, will run all day whether it's running too rich or too lean, either way you look at it, but we wanted more. Our first step to showing it up was modding our 60cc gas gun Milwaukee conversion with some bolt-ons and even nitrous, which got us numbers north of the 1100 the railway gun made with half inch drive, really calling that thing out. So while having the Tanaka ported out might work, our little Milwaukee is already 60ccs, gotta go big or go home. And some of the most power per pound of weight you're gonna get out there is in chainsaws. This one is 92 cc's, a Holtz Forma Farmertech G660, basically a clone of a steel MS660. I've never heard of Holtz Forma, but we got more requests for this than steel themselves. I guess they can do pretty well for themselves, and lots of guys doing budget build hot saw modded versions. We'd be happy to do as well in the future if this thing stays in one piece. Our railway gun gearbox here might be our limitation. But as it is, we're sitting pretty with a 7 horsepower chainsaw, up from a 2 horsepower or so Tanaka, a 350% power gain, and we shaved some pounds, partly from removing this cage here, but down from 44 pounds to 41 flat now. Uh, it's a bit less ergonomic though, so you don't get to enjoy that weight loss, but I'll take it. Now I know what you're saying though, 7 horsepower, how does that be a boosted LS? When it comes to souping up an impact with a fixed hammer and spring size that you don't get to design to fit the motor, something we have a bit of experience in now, it may be counterintuitive, but the way to increase impact wrench torque is to increase speed. Whether you put a 400 or 1400 horsepower LS onto this thing, it's of course going to have no problem spinning that hammer and spring up front, probably won't even notice being attached to it. And seeing all the way up to 6500, maybe north of 7000 RPM, well the tiny 46cc Tanaka was already overcoming the hammer spring that made this thing chooch, and that's a 9800 RPM engine that's getting to about 8500 RPM under that load, turning that impact hammer and gearbox before impacting. So the LS isn't going to be making much if any extra power, just slapping away at a slower pace. Even with an entire T56 trans hanging off the end, the LS wouldn't be overdriven in 6 gear enough to pump things up over this chainsaw. Which we chose a 660 because it enjoys life at 12.5, 13, 13,500 RPM. Which is also the only reason we didn't go for something even bigger in chainsaws like a steel MS881 or G888. More power, but less RPM, so for our purposes, believe it or not, less torque from this impact at least. So all it took was just some brackets welding a different clutch type and size to a heavy duty one of those, and massaging this hopefully to prevent it from slipping and it was up and running. This is it versus a one inch thread grade eight bolt. That's right, the reason it was impacting while removing the bolt is she's proper foobard now. Trying this again with a new 1 inch grade 8 thread in a trailer hitch with some tuning adjustment resulted in this. Practically sheared off all the threads in the nut now, so I'd say she uh, understands the assignment, we'll say. The proper torque for a dry 1 inch 8 grade 8 bolt is 909 foot-pounds to nuke one, well it takes much north of that. 
So let's find out just how close to Santa's house we're going to be hiking up north now with this big boy on our Skidmore machine. So of course we have the Milwaukee one inch in our crosshairs again, and this is what that looked like last time. But our pesky Nitrous M60 also beat the railway gun last time, so we're going to have to throw that into the mix too to see how it really stacks up. Here's the chainsaw impact in our 5 second working torque run. Nine hundred and seventy seven, especially compared to the original railway gun looking pretty spicy so far. It climbs up quick out of the gate. It's still got chops at the end, not slowing down like in this swap so far, and it just sounds way more pissed off. Listen to it compared to the old setup in our 10 second max torque test. Not a scary amount of torque for this size, and our little M60 creation is catching up. Here's the new chainsaw model. One thousand two hundred and twenty three foot pounds exactly the same as the M18. Yep. We've seen this before though coming out quick then trailing off on gas built stuff. Sometimes they are just out of steam but they also need to be tuned differently for longer runs. This tune is great for nuking a one inch thread quickly but longer runs like our 15 second best case scenario test. With some adjustment this is where she really sings now let's see it. Fifteen eighty-three, pulling away from the Milwaukee with pace now. This guy's making over thirteen thousand RPM in the state. We measure sixteen hundred and seventy RPM at the anvil, and that's a one-inch anvil. That's a forty percent increase over stock from just a thirty-one percent increase in engine RPM because the chainsaw isn't getting bogged down from this amount of load. All right, our last test is removing some tightened stuff. We're going to show you this, the chainsaw impacting to remove twelve hundred thirty-eight foot-pounds first for reasons that will be very apparent soon. Up against the Milwaukee and also the cordless Ingersoll Rand, the most powerful cordless impact wrench on the planet. These tools will be starting at various torque levels to show you what we're trying to demonstrate here. So for one, can it remove 12 to 1300 foot pounds? Yep, no problem in six to seven seconds or so. Its curve is also odd looking. This is a sign of a weak sauce hammer spring, or at least weak compared to the engine that's behind it now. Not making big force per blow gains, but slapping the ever living heck out of it with 13,000 RPM eventually does get it to move. And lastly, all of these three tools remove these torque levels in the same amount of time. 1000 foot pounds or so for the M18, 1200 and change for the chainsaw impact, and yes, 1400 for the cordless IR. 
which means, yes, we have been bested by a tool that's for sale on the market already. Also demonstrated by the fact that it registered more in our dyno testing, but it's good to know that it translates to loosening. Well, not good news to know, wish this thing made north of 2000, but we can't have everything we want including a working impact any longer. Yes, she's broken now. But off to the ranking to see the stripes that she did earn before writing her own obituary. Starting below the stock form of this tool on our large drive size impact ranking tab that includes big boy impacts that you can buy and those that we've abused with the MIG welder, this one's power runs are turned into points as 98, 122, and 158. Very happy with this type of power increase, which we thought might not be possible with the current components up front. 41 pounds, this is also impressive to gain that much power and shave weight, though the battery boys are still killing it up here in that regard. Our goal for this tool was like 1500 foot pounds. This obviously doesn't advertise a torque figure, however, so our creation gets the average of this category with a 76. 4100 bucks, not a cost effective endeavor to make torque if there ever was one. Yeah, don't do it. There are better ways to lean into your midlife crisis. 5.8 points, second to last because it made enough sauce to beat this. That totals 489.6, putting it atop our creations and below the Milwaukee and IR guns. Makes sense, all of our silly stuff being grouped here together. Makes a ton of power, so pretty good, but yeah, also go buy the things that do this better and don't risk dismemberment. And speaking of losing vital parts, onto the reason we couldn't show you this thing loosening anything above 1238. That is because after that, she wasn't fit to loosen even 638, much less 1238. Sounds super healthy still, but that's just the engine talking. There's no real beans coming out the anvil end. A five second test now registers like 370 foot pounds. Lots more felt vibrations, some rattling going around in the gearbox, and well, it's not pretty. All right, moment of truth. Okay. Doesn't look too bad. Oh, there was, there's a couple clumps. That can't be good. Yeah, that's looking a little silvery. Ooh. Ooh, yep. There's one. I don't know what that is, but I imagine you need it. Yeah, it feels like sandpaper. Lots of tiny little debris, metal shards. Yeah, check this out. I got this piece. Heck, I figured this thing's so properly foobarred, we could probably just take this apart and not worry about it too much. Here's the anvil. Properly beefy. Some old school anvil dog design. Sort of an old school hammer as well, just very large. And you can almost, you can compress the spring by hand. I mean, you can't even do that on most half inch high torques. Yeah, the spring is the mechanical limitation. You can only spin it so fast and hit so hard before you just max out that spring. So it's like a hollow hammer design with an internal spring, which is a bit of a waste as far as mass goes. It makes the hammer not super heavy, but it does shorten things. But it's pretty long to begin with, so I don't really see a huge advantage. I guess if you're not after like 2,000 foot-pounds, might as well consolidate it in one area. Let's see if we could get a closer look. Well, the output shaft's not broken. Looks like this is all pressed onto a bushing, so it doesn't come apart too easily. Inside, though, you can see a spring. 
not sure if you can see a spring, but... And the thickness of that spring is smaller than what you'd find on an M18 high torque, or even the Bauer that just came out. So, not a ton of spring tension. Decent amount of mass, but still hollow, so we're not dealing with anything crazy as far as moment of inertia goes. We were more than half expecting this, where it is around the railroad crews, that the gearboxes on these things aren't exactly their strong suit. Replacement parts are stupid expensive on these. We could of course throw together our own aftermarket gearbox on here and send out the chainsaw to get the hot saw treatment, but we've already determined the hammer spring doesn't provide a lot of tension to mechanically keep up, and really even the hammer in this unit is just made for all day general use not sky high impressive numbers. I feel our next direction might be in cordless, like the non-smoky kind. We started out seeing if we could beat battery with dyno fuel. Let's see if we can cobble together some crazy power tool creations to be our own gas ones and maybe someday this damn IR as well. Sheesh, some billion dollar company making a tool better than us. The nerve on those guys. Click subscribe to stick around to watch that madness unfold and thanks for watching.